Start in. Right then, good stuff. We are back, guys, with game number four between Roma and Titanic in this five game series. I'm looking forward to seeing this one. Uh, this is actually Nomad this time. Not Land Nomad, but the real Nomad. And uh, Nomad is a very messy map. Should be interesting to see how it goes. And I'm just going to wait for these guys to um, basically set up their TCs before I introduce them and see where they're at. Because the, the, it's not locked locations. It's not locked teams, and it does often mean that it, there's a lot of problems yeah, with players basically starting on top of each other. Uh, they end up blaming each other's resources and all of that stuff, so we have to wait and wait for these TCs to come up before we actually start uh, introducing and seeing where the players are at. And we'll try and make more sense of this. I've got to say, normal Nomad, standard Nomad is much more complicated and um, kind of hectic than the Lange Nomad, so uh, it's going to be a tough one to watch, especially in a 4v4 format, depending on where the players start, <laughs> and uh, immediately, TWNH boy, going to lose his sheep there to Eddie as his villagers pass by, and wow, just those two sheep just, just scraping by there, so close, and uh, yeah, of course, try to secure those sheep early on, trying to get your TC locations early on, it's really important, and uh, Eddie's, NH boy even, I meant NH boy, uh, going for... A complete stroll over here. These villagers walking miles, it seems. He's playing as the Chinese, which means he does get a few extra villagers at the start, which is always nice in Nomad. In fact, getting up a, villa a dock at the bottom. But you can see uh, just a whole mess of stuff going on at the moment. And uh, we will try and uh, make sense of it all and, and scramble it all in just a minute's time. But yes, uh, Roma falling behind after winning such a great first game. Titanic taking the series so far at 2-1. And um, it's not a best of five, like I've said before. It is just a five straight games. But of course, the more games you win, the better chance you have of getting out of the group stages. Um, each, it's a, each group is a round robin. So you play all of the other player, all of the other teams in your group. And whoever has the most points at the end goes through the, the top two go through and I think the the third place has a chance or some I can't remember how it works with the third place but each the top two teams in each group will go through to the next stage of the tournament and so you know getting as many points on the board as you can by winning as many games as possible is just going to be so important to all of these teams and all of these players so it looks like everyone's got their TCs up. Let's try and make sense of this. Uh, thankfully, all of the Titanic guys are wearing their tags. So we'll see where they're at. And uh, first of all, we've got Eddie, who is kind of in the central western area of the map. He's in the red, playing as the Chinese. Chinese are a great sieve to start on Nomad, simply because you have the extra villagers, a little bit of extra capacity to collect resources, extra map scouting and visibility, all of that good stuff. And um, the the uh, Chinese players on both teams getting the score lead already over their teammates. That's expected. So Chinese for Eddie here in the central sort of west area of the map. He seems to be on the flank, sort of. Uh, we've got Cloud right next to him, so he's sort of in the flank area here. Now in the pocket sort of area, I, it's not even the pocket position really, um, but just north of Eddie, we've got Antan in the green playing as the Mayans. So these two are pretty close together here on the left of the map. Now to their right, they've got, actually they've got rocks, but uh, just up to the north of that, they've got Kuta, who is in grey, playing as the Persians. So we've got Kuta here, um, we've got Antan here, and Eddie here. So these guys sort of bridging over the top of this, this lake here. And just to the right of Kuta, on the other flank, I guess you could say, is VM, and he's playing as the Vikings in blue. So it's nice for, for Titanic here, they're all at the north of the map, and whoa, Rock's gonna lose a villager if he's not careful. VM coming in to join the fight a bit of villager action going on already and uh, that's uh, entertaining to say the least <laughs> so just down to the south of Kuta we've got rocks he's in the geek orange playing as the Mayans now he is just south of them and fortunately getting a wall off pretty quickly here he's gonna want to make sure he is walled against them uh, off to his right they've got Levi B in the yellow he's playing as Vikings and he's pretty open to VM at the north but both of these guys Vikings here and uh, both of them facing up on the flanks at the north 
in the, I guess you could say now, pocket position for Roma. We've got NH Boy over to the far east of the map in the purple, playing as the Chinese. And over to the other side on the west of the map, on the, the southwest side, we've got Cloud playing as the Persians in teal. Persians, great sib, by the way, for Nomad. Uh, extra, extra TC health. Gives your TC a bit of extra firepower if you end up building next to an enemy. Uh, the knights uh, that they create just so strong. It's it's all good. Persians, pretty standard pick actually for Nomad. So hopefully we've kind of made sense of that. Now I'm going to confuse you even more because the docks are all around the edge of the map and they are in no way related to the location of the town centers that these players have. Uh, that's the very south. We've got the dock from Cloud. Just to the left of him, we've got NH Boy's dock at uh, the south here as well. We've got Levi B's dock at the south and we've also got um, Rox's dock down here. Rox's dock, I like that. Uh, these three are uh, pretty close together on the water, so whilst Roma are very split up on the land, with the cloud being way, way out the way of his teammates, he is so far apart from his teammates, they are close together on the water, and in fact, Antan, the green player here, a little bit exposed, I guess. Um, he's very close to the three docks from the Roma guys, and he's on his own over here. We've got a dock going up again on the corner for him. The closest dock from a teammate is VM. He's the Viking player, and he's on this uh, this north side, I guess, or the northwest side of the map. So his dock's over here. The other docks are way over on the other side of the map. Eddie's docked right on the east side of the map, and that looks like it's about it. I'm not seeing... Gray's dock, and I'm wondering if he's got one. It almost well, doesn't look like he has, which is very strange. Uh, in fact, no, he has got a dock. It's on the center of the map, and yeah, docks on the center are risky, and uh, this dock from Gray is horrible because he's docked a lake, but there's no big fish in it, and it's not connected to the main lake. Uh, this is the main lake, and this is the central lake. This is where the big fish are. Uh, Gray has none of that. He's got these piddly shore fish, but at least on the bright side, his fish are safe, I guess. Uh, but it's not so great not being able to take those big fish. So yeah, hopefully you guys have made sense of this. I'm going to have a few issues remembering who is who and where is what, but uh, it seems to me like the wall offs should help us out in seeing where the kind of the teams lie. But like I say, uh, Cloud is very, very on his own over on this left side. He's going to be facing up against Eddie. Eddie's Chinese in this position. Cloud is the Persians. Perhaps Eddie might have a slight advantage going up to Feudal here. But we will see. Um, he is going to be unwalled against a Cloud, it seems, at the moment. In fact, Eddie's probably not going to be able to wall this. Oh, he's going to get a villager kill, though. Cloud getting villager killed underneath that TC from Eddie there. Eddie got to take those boar in peace. He says, get out of here, villager. You are not welcome. Uh, Eddie's got gold, though. That's really nice. And uh, also with Nomad, I mean, one of the big things with Nomad is that uh, the resources can be really unevenly distributed. Now, if we have a look at Cloud, his gold is way out here on the left. Not only is he really far from his teammates, but his gold is an absolute mile away from his TC. And Eddie could come in here with knights or whatever and uh, start doing a lot of damage to this gold pile. So, I mean, it, it could be that that uh, Cloud is very much at risk from Eddie here. If Eddie does go into some knights and start raiding these gold piles and stuff, he's probably going to want to wall it up if he can. Uh, on this left side and across here, but uh, it might not be it might be easier said than done rather Especially the fact that uh, the the green player Antan is right behind Eddie here It could be very much a 2v1 on cloud here if we if he's not careful so difficult situation for him and Otherwise for the Roma team. It's not too bad on the right side. They're pretty close together uh, But orange does not have much gold at all. No, no gold anywhere near. Oh wait. No, he does have gold just to the right, kind of hidden on the minimap there by yellows, walls, and houses. But sometimes, like I say, gold can be really unevenly balanced, and I'm thinking at the moment that the gold for blue is not looking great. VM is going to have to go right the way back here for his gold, and this could actually put a bit more emphasis on the water for the Roma team, because... All this gold on the shoreline could be very much at risk if they lose the water. So water sometimes doesn't have such a huge impact. But in this situation, I think water might be very useful for the Roma team to have. Because they could push these guys away from gold at the back here if they have water control. 
Um, on the other areas of the map, again, these, these gold bars are very close to the water for the Titanic team. And other than Eddie, who has gold in front of his TC, everybody's gold for the Titanic team is on the shore. So they are going to have to be very careful not to lose water there. And if Roma noticed that, then they might actually change strategy slightly and perhaps try to um, push the water or press the water much more. Eddie's trying to lay in this gold though from Cloud. I don't know if you noticed that. that Palisade. Follow me. Palisade there from Eddie. Coming forwards and uh, yeah, he's gonna try and lame it. Of course, uh, Cloud's not having any of that, and he's like, "Get out of here! Let me build my palisade in peace." Uh, might might lose a villager if he's not careful, but it might be worth it. If Eddie loses one villager at the cost of, of the you know the cost of walling up this goal, I'd say that was worth it. But at the moment, Eddie's gonna get trapped. Uh, Cloud's gonna wall this up, and Eddie's gonna have to run away. That villager may as well just try and finish the wall off. I kind of feel like, well, you may as well just go for it now. Uh, but this villager will... I don't know, that villager is probably not blocking that palisade, actually. But yeah, Eddie's not going to get out comfortably there. No chance of that at all. Now, Feudal Age upgrade coming in for most players here. In fact, Eddie is the last up to Feudal, just reaching the Feudal Age now. Uh, but he looks like he wants to fast castle this one. Um, he's very close to the Castle Age in terms of resources. He could have done a much faster Feudal time had he um, wanted to do that I guess but no he wants to fast castle it by the looks of things makes sense against the um, Persian player anyway he was obviously looking for a fast castle as well cloud here just short on gold looking for that uh, 200 gold at the moment so he can click up to castle as well now water Antan, you can see three docks on this left flank for him. Four docks, in fact. He's going four docks, galleys here. And it's it's so worth it for these guys because these guys have so much fishing down here. All of Roma's fishing is down at the south of the map. We've got NW, uh, NH Boy. We've got Cloud. We've got Rocks. We've even got Levi B. All fishing this area of the map. And if Antan can get in there with his fishers and take that out. That is a huge disadvantage for the Roma team. And like we said before, it's going to help the Titanic team to secure this gold on the shore, which later on in the, in the game is going to be incredibly risky. Now, for the Roma team, it's basically 4v1 down here. You know, there's no no real galley protection or galley reinforcements from VM. He's got one galley out at the moment, and he's the Viking player as well. So, um, Antan go with the four docks as the Mayans, and uh, VM one galley to back this up. But I mean, really, for the Roma team, they're all trying to fast castle this, I think. And as a result, they might just end up going for fire ships once they get up to the castle edge. But they may have lost way too much already. Uh, or, or way too much at that point. So obviously, um, Antan doing good damage down in the south here. Meanwhile, at the north, they're walling each other off and trying to prevent any early aggression in the feudal age. So castles, fast castles, are going to be the case here. And in fact, Kuta is nearly up to the castle age already, and he is the Persian player for the Titanic team. In comparison to Cloud, much faster. Cloud, the other Persian player for Roma now, uh, he is um, only on 15 or 14 percent up to the castle age. So good that Kuta got the advantage there and we've got a stable out for him so we can expect to see knights but I don't think we're going to expect to see him pushing through here very easily as Roma seem to have walled this up pretty heavily as well uh, so Kusa's knights are out, but he doesn't even matter. He doesn't even care for the walls. He's got a transport ship, and he's loading that up now with knights. He's going to send them across, and that is very well played, and a nice, nice thought by Kuta. He's been playing really well these games, actually, and I think Kuta's been a really enjoyable player to watch. Uh, so he is going to get in there. Of course, uh, Rox has spotted that out, but Kuta's going to get the knight behind enemy lines, and as there's no dock here, Kuta can see keep sending them over as well. Now, Antan's still holding the water in the south. That's looking really good for him. Uh, oh, man. Scout cavalry at the back looking for a villager kill. <laughs> is it going to happen? This villager could just die, but uh, reinforcements have arrived. Eddie has sent his villagers to fight it off. Uh, but anyway, yeah, like I say, uh, it's looking pretty interesting on the water at the moment. I've got to say, Titanic, if they take the water, are going to be in a hugely uh, advantageous position. But we'll see if they manage to keep that off. Uh, keep that um, keep that water control, sorry. 
Now, over on this left flank, of course, the Persian player now, Castle. We've also got Eddie Castle, but he's going straight into Camels, actually. I like that decision from him. Uh, camels straight out. Knights as well. Now, Chinese, fantastic Camels, and they are a good counter to Persians as well. So, uh, that Camel and Knight mix is expected. Uh, the Persian player might even go Camels and Knights as well here, because it's likely that the Chinese player is going to add the Camels, so the, the Persian player may decide to do the same, just to be able to try and counter it. At the moment, Cloud just doing double Knights at the moment, and adding in a Monastery as well. He's building a Monastery against Eddie. I think he wants some revenge from that earlier. That earlier play that Eddie did uh, when he held him down in his base as the Franks. But Eddie's already got the first monks out. Medi Eddie does not mess around. Uh, try to get that conversion in there. He's waving his wallows in the air like he just don't care. And uh, those knights are at risk from Cloud now. And that uh, uh, that monk advantage is going to be his. Coming in with those battering rams. This is just Eddie's game, isn't it? I mean, he's loving this. Like this, this is his style. However... NH, NH boy getting in in the middle and he's, yeah, he's just running straight through. These guys are wide open. This center area here is not walled, of course, because it is ice. You cannot wall ice. Uh, you just can't. It's not possible. And as a result, NH boy getting straight into Antan Zico. Antan, of course, still feudal because he's been rushing like a madman over in the south. Still killing a lot, a lot of fishing ships, though. Score lead by a mile for Antan. But yeah, those knights getting right into his eco. And that is, of course, going to mean that Eddie needs to go back with those camels. And take those knights down. Don't blame Eddie at all for going back there. Uh, I mean, that is that he has to deal with those knights. Otherwise, Antan is in serious trouble. Uh, he cannot defend with spearmen alone. Building this like huge wall of houses. I love it. I love that like sort of circular wall of houses there. That's fantastic. Uh, meanwhile. Uh, we got VM on the water as well in the top, taking down these docks from Levi B. Not going to let Levi B get on the water here. Uh, we got War Galley upgrade coming for him, and, and Galley's coming out. But uh, he's really not got many docks at all, and uh, Antan is taking that water control like crazy, taking down those docks in the south, and uh, yeah, like I say, I mean, water control is so huge. These guys now, the Titanic team that is, with so many more fishing ships, so much more food income, and that is so huge when you are trying to boom up on 3 TCs, you need all the food you can get. When you're trying to make camels and knights, you need all the food you can get. And at the moment, that food is going straight into Titanic's coffers, into their food bank. Uh, Eddie losing a monk, but he will get a conversion. And oh man, he's going to lose another monk as well here. He's not done Sanctity. Uh, so he doesn't have a little bit of extra health there. He would, if he does Sanctity, he can tank one more hit from a knight with his monks. So uh, Sanctity, I'm surprised he's not done it yet. Might even be on the way, but nope. Maybe soon. Soon, TM. Up in the north. Wow, Kuta. Owning it in the north. Maganel out, getting through that wall, busting it down. And uh, those knights are chasing down NH boy. Uh, this castle and TC from rocks, though, uh, having a good effect. They are going to be able to push this back. That castle with uh, 8 plus 2 range here, but it's not enough to kill the Maganel. That TC could end up going down if Rox is not careful. And Rox having a few bad games here, a couple of bad games in a row. Building his new TC up in the north, but for a Mayan player, they do not want to be at 32 population at this point in time. The Mayan player is a very good early Imperial Civ. They want to get the, the pressure on as soon as they've reached the Imperial Age. But no. Um, uh, what am I going to say? Rox is just not there at the moment. Uh, down in the south, though, Cloud seems to be pushing Eddie back. A couple of monks and manganels for both of them. And uh, Cloud trying to beat Eddie at his own game, I think. Uh, meanwhile, on the right, those fishing ships going on the ice and getting killed by Roxas Castle. Brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, of course, the, the fishing ships actually can cross the ice. I totally forgot that. But it's not really much use to uh, uh, Kuta if those fishing ships can cross the ice because his dock is so far away that fishing these is going to be really difficult anyway. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Rock's going to lose this TC if they don't do anything about it. And I, I don't really see what they can do. NH Boy could have come in and sniped that Manganel, but that communication doesn't seem to be there at the moment. Meanwhile, Eddie are looking to get these... Uh 
get these conversions where he can. Got to be careful not to lose that monk to the mangonel though, and he loses the monk to the mangonel. Eddie's going to get one mangonel here, and uh, might lose his mangonel before he gets another shot. Yes, he does. Cloud probably going to be very happy to be taking Eddie out here, uh, taking Eddie out on a date. Uh, a date with death because uh, Cloud, after that last game, probably very disappointed with the fact that he lost so badly there. However, Eddie at the moment doesn't seem to have a huge military. He is up on three TCs and he has got a good fishing advantage, but he's 2v1 down here with NH Boy backing him up, uh, backing Cloud up with some knights and of course knights from Cloud as well. And these monks, which are going to be pretty potent. Eddie, though, sniping that mangonel and that's what he needs for now. But this raiding going to be coming in. And that is not good at all. He's going to have to be forced inside of those TCs. I wonder what Eddie is looking like eco-wise. Not too bad. Um, 73 population. Uh, <laughs> Spears coming over from NH Boy. He knew. Anton knew they would be useful. And he's sending them in now. Chasing those knights away. Uh, meanwhile, on the right side, it is still walled up. Uh, but rocks must have lost that TC. Yes, he has. Kuta going to be happy with that as that TC falls and Rox is down to one TC again. And you know, for the Mayan player, that is less than ideal, like I say. So Kuta, the Persian player here. Uh, I, oh, 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 what was that? VM. Ah, okay. So VM, the blue player here. The Vikings, of course, slinging Eddie at the moment. Eddie getting that sling again. and It, it seems like they like to sling Eddie in these games. And to be fair... I think Eddie needs it down here. He is still 2v1. Antan, meanwhile, is now castle, but he's he's still got that water control, which is great. Building these new TCs up. And uh, in fact, that both Mayan players are a little bit delayed, uh, a little bit behind in terms of economy, simply because they both um, were forced into feudal aggression. And, well, no, I guess Rox wasn't forced into feudal aggression. Uh, Antan was doing feudal aggression on the water, which slowed his castle down. And Rox, obviously, just under pressure, full stop from Kuta here with that mangonel. But uh, we've got some plumed archers out from Rox now, getting some revenge, taking out those fishing ships with his plumed archers. Good stuff. And uh, might be looking for some villager kills as well if you can get in here. Kuta not walled up actually behind this so it could be open to an attack. Uh, Kuta's coming out of the left side though. Stable's coming up and I can only assume Kuta is up to the Imperial Age right now. Yes he is at 25% and of course Persians we know what to expect. Late game we are going to be seeing Cavalier and Paladins eventually. Question is how's the Persian player looking for the other team. Cloud, still castle. Is he anywhere near to the Imperial Age? Well, no. He is very far from Imperial at the moment. And they are really trying to push Eddie right back. If they can take Eddie out, even if Kusa goes Imperial and starts Paladin spam, um, if, if Eddie's out of the game, if they can push in and through to Antan as well, then that's going to be very bad news for the Titanic game, uh, team. And that could be, that could be a very big problem. For these guys. So, Eddie fighting under this TC now. Uh, these are, well, a lot of villagers going down. Knight's taking a lot of arrow fire, though, but the rams are in as well. Eddie, though, is, well, Anton even, building a castle here, and there's no easy way around for the uh, Roma team. Eddie's got his pikemen blocking these knights out. That castle will go up, and there's another castle on the right from Eddie now as well. Cloud not using his five monks here. He could get some villager conversions or just something. Maybe even convert these pikes. But that castle goes up. This TC on the left may stay up still. Yes, it will. Eddie just going to get those rams down in time. And these two castles here will secure this left flank. And that, at the moment, I think is all they need to do. They need to buy their time. They need to buy some time. And uh, they are doing just that. These two castles will secure this left flank. And there is Kuta up to the Imperial Age now. And those paladins, well, those cavalier, I guess are going to be coming out very soon. His eco is looking nice. He's got 125 pop. He's fully boomed up on four TCs. He's got the sling from VM if he needs it. And uh, these guys, the uh, the Roma guys, are open in the middle of the map as well. The knights from um, the, from Kuta chasing down these uh, uh, plumed archers from rocks. And if we have a look at the other guys, Eddie's now up to Imperial. Surprising, but uh, he is uh, being slung by VM, of course. And for Roma, everybody is still castle and Kuta is just loving being in the Imperial Age now. Nothing to stop him. 
making unmassing these knights and cavalier at the moment. More stables coming up, more units being queued out of these stables. I mean, where where's the moment? Where is the cavalier upgrade? There it was. It was on about 50%. So left flank is secured. And it doesn't look like Cloud and NH Boy were able to do the damage over here. And this is the problem. They've lost all water. They have no fishing. And, I mean, if you look at Green, he has so many fishing ships here. Uh, Eddie has a load of fishing. VM has fishing. The huge amount of food that they're getting in is going to allow Titanic to get up to the Imperial Age first. And in fact, Eddie now as well up to Imp, so that's two of them out of four. VM doesn't need to go Imperial, he can just stay Castle. And meanwhile, um, Antan is nearly up to the Imperial Age as well. And that is going to be so huge, it's going to be very potent. We're going to see Plumed Archers out, and uh, Cloud's going to have a very tough time defending against Eddie and Antan being Imperial on this left flank. Meanwhile, Kuta can just continue to mass up the Cavalier in the middle. And uh, yeah, I mean, NH Boy just going to throw away these Knights by the looks of it. Uh, fighting against Cavalier, not the wisest decision with the Knights, and uh, they're going to have to either run away or try and run to the back of the map and kill some villagers or something, but yeah, they're not going to last long, and Kuta now able to run through. Like I say, this area of the map, unwallable on the ice. They can run through, they can run around, and yeah, I mean, Levi B is walled up here, but if they run through this castle, if they take a risk, I mean, a, a one castle, not going to do a huge amount of damage against plus four defense cavalier. They run through the castle, and they get into this back section of the eco for Levi B and Rocks, and that is a big deal and a big problem for these guys. But Kuta seems to be coming south anyway. He wants to go for Cloud, and like I said at the start of this game, Cloud is very exposed, very open. Um because he is so far from his teammates. So we've got Kuta here with Cavalier. We've got Antan now uh, up to the Imperial Age. Eddie who is Imperial. We've got Chuko News. We've got 3v1 against Cloud on this left flank. And these guys could literally just run in here and steamroll this. Cloud at the moment. A couple of mangonels. That's going to be good for taking out Eddie's Chuko New. Eddie's going to try and get out of the way. But like I say, I mean, where's the reinforcements here for Cloud? There is none. Um, NH boy is too far away. He's only making knights at the moment. Is he up to the Imperial Age? He's got to be. Yes, he is. He's finally nearly up to the Imperial Age, but it's too late, really. Kuta's probably going to have Paladin by the time NH boy gets up to Imperial, and that Paladin upgrade is on 85%. This is going to be potent now. Catch Rams coming forwards, and Cloud has no support on this flank. We've got uh, Castle coming up from Antan right here. Like, what? Well, how is that castle there? I mean, Antan has so much water control back here. He's pressuring Cloud from the water as well. And that Paladin upgrade now is done. And yeah, Cloud is going to lose this TC in a few seconds. Meanwhile, though... Um, Meanwhile, VM in trouble. Uh, we've got plumed archers from rocks pushing through here. VM asking Kuta to not let him die. And, I mean, this is quite open here. Kuta probably should send some paladins back. But instead, he's just going forwards into rocks' economy. Perhaps going to use aggression as a form of defense here. Rocks, of course, bringing those plumed archers back. And even if that wall goes down now, those plumed archers have been brought back. And there's the GG from Cloud. Cloud knows he can't uh, stand up to that as Kuta runs in with the paladins as the capped rams take down his TCs and their only shot at getting back at these guys was this push here in the middle of the map and rocks could not get through because of this from Kuta, the Paladins, and the capped rams taking down this castle and uh, raiding his eco. So very good game from Antan. Antan